Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be looking at Ubiquity Amplify HD. This is a whole home mesh Wi-Fi system. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server and Amazon storefront, and I'll put a link in the description below. For the last week and a half, I moved my main network over to the Amplify HD system, and I have to say it works great. You would want to use a mesh type system if you can't physically wire a cable to an access point or to your end devices. So let's take a look at what comes inside the Amplify HD. First up, we have the Amplify router. This features an adjustable full color touchscreen display. On the bottom of the Amplify router, we have an adjustable LED that is fully lit by default when the router is configured and ready for use. On the back, we have four one gigabit ethernet interfaces, and then we have a one gigabit WAN interface. We also have a USB and then our power input. We have a reset button on the bottom of the Amplify router. Next, we have two mesh point antennas. On the front, we have this LED, which will show us our signal strength to the Amplify router. And we just plug these mesh points into our power receptacle. It comes with some cards for a quick start guide, a power cable, and then a flat ethernet cable. All right, now we've seen what comes in the box with the Amplify HD. On the back of the box, it says that it covers up to 20,000 square feet. My house is only about 2,000 square feet, so I can't put that to the test. It also has 3x3 MIMO and an aggregate speed of 5.25 gigabits per second. The price for the Amplify HD is $419 Canadian MSRP. As you can see right now, I've plugged in the Amplify router into my WAN connection. And then I've plugged in the mesh points into the wall and we could see the lights for the signal strength going up and down in blue. It's not configured yet. So let's get into the Amplify phone app and get it configured. Now I've logged into the Amplify app. You could download this for either iOS or Android. And as you can see on the screen, we need to press continue. It says, welcome, congratulations on your Amplify purchase. And then we have two different options. We have set up Amplify mesh system and set up Amplified standalone mesh point. We're gonna select the first one and set up the system. It's telling us to power off our ISP modem and then connect the Ethernet cable into our mesh router, which we've already done. Once that's done, we need to connect the power and then we need to power on both of our devices. Now it's saying Amplify would like to find and connect to devices on your local network. We'll press OK and we can see the app has found the Amplify router and I'll click on the Amplify router HD. And that was pretty easy. We've connected to the Amplify router and it's asking us to put in a wireless name as well as a wireless password. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll call this YouTube. And then we'll do a password of test1234. And then we'll verify the password of test1234. So we could reuse the same password for administration, which isn't a good idea. So we'll turn that off and then we'll create a new password. For this, I'll just put in test12345, but you'll want to put in something stronger. After our Wi-Fi SSID is entered and our passwords are entered, we'll press continue. It now says setup complete. Your Amplify has been successfully configured. Open Wi-Fi settings and connect to YouTube. We'll press continue. And we could enable remote management if we would like. I'm not gonna have it enabled right now, but if you'd like to, you could select enable remote management. I'll press skip. Now I'm logged into the Wi-Fi SSID that we created and we could see that there's new updates available. So let's tap to update the devices so that we're getting the best performance we can. I'll tap on where it says new updates available. And it shows that for the mesh router and the two mesh points that there's updates, we're gonna update all of them. We'll press install. And once that's done, we'll look through some of the settings. Now the firmware update has completed. We could see that everything is great and the system's been up for eight minutes. Now we can see the settings of each device. We'll start with the router first. So we'll just click on the router and then it's gonna bring up a settings page. So we have general internet wireless. We have the LCD screen and the LED brightness. We have night mode and we could have when the night mode begins and ends. We also have this Wi-Fi protected setup, which enables for two minutes. That's if you want to use WPS functionality. So let's start at the top. Let's see what's under general. Here we could select the device name for our router and our time zone. 
We could also turn up or down the sound effects that the mesh router makes when it has firmware updates that are completed. We could locate it, which would just make a flashing light, change the password, reboot, and then we could do a factory reset. Under internet, this is where we're gonna specify what it uses. So my Amplify router is getting its IP from DHCP, but you could specify static IP or PPPoE. And then we could see our IP address, our net mask, our gateway, and then the DNS that it's using. Also, there's a few other options. We have hardware NAT, UPnP, which I'm going to turn off. We have a clone MAC address, VLAN ID, IPv6, and then we have bridge mode. Under wireless, we could see our main SSID, which is called YouTube, and then our password. We could click the toggle switch to show the password. And then we could see our different security types. Right now it's WPA2 pre-shared key. For the security types, we have none, which would mean this is wide open. WPA pre-shared key and WPA2. We could hide our SSID and then we have our guest Wi-Fi. So under our guest Wi-Fi, the SSID just automatically creates YouTube-guest, but we could change this and then we could add a security type to it. Under other, we could specify the country and then we could do band steering, router steering, and then track on advanced. On the advanced, this is where we could do our channel selection and our channel width. So it's set by default at channel 11 on the 2.4 gigahertz and channel 40 on the 5 gigahertz at channel width of 80 megahertz. Now clicking on one of our mesh points, we could see our signal strength and we're at minus 60 dB, which is great. We could see the mesh point is operating on the 5 gigahertz band and we could see the device name. And we could change the name to specify which room it's in. We could turn on or off the LED and then we could pause the mesh point altogether if we want to turn off the internet to that. They do have sound effects, so we could turn that completely off if we don't want that to bother us. And we could also do the locate, reboot, or we could look at support info. At the bottom, we have system, performance, guest, devices, and then we have diagnose. So we'll click on performance, and this would just show us a speed test. So I'll press start test. And that result is fairly low. I don't know if that's taking it directly off the WAM port of the back of the router or if it's taking it from my phone. I'll press next. And then under that menu, it's gonna show us all of our saved tests. We could look at guest and we don't have guest enabled right now. And then we could see our devices. As you could tell, my iPhone is the only device connected right now. If we wanted to, we could pause all internet traffic to the devices on this. And if we click on diagnose, we could see that the WAN link is up, the IP address gateway and the DNS. And we could also see that both mesh points are up. On screen, you could see some speed tests that I took. The one on the left, 231 megabits per second down and 183 up is on this floor. That's where the router is, as well as one of the mesh points. The reading in the middle, 323 megabits per second down and 259 up, that's on my main floor. That's where I have one of the other mesh points. And the last one is in my basement. There's no mesh points down there at all, but we're still getting 70.9 megabits per second down and 62.9 up. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I tested this out for about a week and a half as my main network. I had about 40 or 50 devices on it and had no issues at all. So if you can't physically run a cable in your home and you need great Wi-Fi coverage, I would highly recommend this system. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. All right, thanks.